Here's the tricky thing about the neighboring rights. Uh, the United States does not collect neighboring rights um, for sound recordings. They weren't part of that convention. They didn't sign that convention. It was an international treaty that was signed. So artists in the U.S. oftentimes are not familiar. Now, Salmon Exchange, um, which deals with our sound recording copyright in the U.S., does collect for um, uses on satellite radio and, and the like, but it does not collect for it only collects for digital radio royalties on broadcast and non-terrestrial radio. So that's your Pandora, that's your Sirius XM. Well, Lion Vice, tell them that's the people first choice. Lion Vice, make the lion let them feel nice. Lion Vice, be the lion cubs we sacrifice. Lion Vice, got to show the people them the life. Well, lion Vice. Greetings in that divine name of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie the First. Glory and honor in the name of His Chosen Queen, Empress Waziro Menin. My name is Kwasi Bansu, aka the Chasmash Kwasi, aka the Reading Ras, aka Ras Kwasi, aka the Pan African Happy Man. I'm an entertainment attorney, I'm an author, I'm an actionist, and I'm an artist. And today, I stand before you once again as the host of The Lion Voice. Welcome once again to another episode of The Lion Voice Vlog. We haven't done a legal episode in a while. To be honest, the legal episodes haven't been doing as well in terms of views. I enjoy doing them and um, I want to just take some time to big up everyone who has reached out for consultations. Um, legal consultations through the website you see the uh, website um, on the page so I want to just give thanks for everyone who's reached out for their consultation their legal consultation oftentimes when we as attorneys get a situation it's already gone bad it's very rare that you have people in the creative industry that will sit with an attorney and get a roadmap so that they can avoid the problems and we want to change that culture and that's why I continue to do these legal episodes even though they don't perform well there are the chosen few that are seeing these episodes and are reaching out and booking their consultations so I want to just salute all of those problem solvers and just to remind everyone that you can book a legal consultation uh, with me there's a portal through my website we schedule it now I am licensed in Washington DC and Maryland so if you're outside of that jurisdiction um, be advised that it's just a consultation and uh, likely you know we'll try to get you paired with someone who is in your jurisdiction but it's always good to connect with an entertainment attorney and I tell everyone the first person on your team that you talk to when you're building a team as a creative should be an entertainment attorney that's the first person you should sit down with because when you get a someone who's interested in to manage you you want to have someone who can review that agreement or who can guide you in terms of forming all the other relationships and components that will make up your creative team so uh, again all of those who book their consultations big up yourself give thanks um, it's been an honor to serve and I'm looking forward to um, assisting many more of you that, that reach out. Um, we're also doing just general creative consultations as well. So if it's not legal, you just want more of a sounding board, you want ideas, recommendations, uh, maybe some connections that we can help in terms of helping you to build your business as a music industry executive, uh, then we can talk on that side. So you can book either the legal consultation or just a general uh, creative business consultation through the website and again uh, big up everyone who has been booking the, the creative it's been a joy to hear the ideas to help shape uh, a new generation of, of creatives and even some veterans who are very well um, schooled it's been an honor to be a part of that process so definitely check out the website book your consultation and now we're gonna get into this episode. And this episode I'm gonna talk about, uh, we're gonna continue the power of copyright. There are so many um, powers that copyright. So 
we want to be thorough and I'm also giving you um, issues that have actually come up in my practice so I want to talk about uh, one of the ways that artists can make some money and that is the collection of neighboring rights so today we're going to talk about the power of copyright and this goes under the public performance right remember you have your six bundle of rights and we'll put those on the screen so that you can see the six bundles of rights um, big up my editor and we're going to talk about again the public performance right but this time as it relates to neighboring rights now what are neighboring rights a lot of Jamaican artists and I am really focused on reggae and dance all that's my area that I'm really building my niche I'm born in Jamaica I'm an artist myself I do reggae hip-hop so that's kind of my area that I am passionate about is reggae and dancehall. Now you may know that I also am uh, one of the founders and the CEO of the Jamaica Music Conference. By the way, let me just uh, stick this in. Our Jamaica Music Conference IG account has been hacked. We are doing all that we can. We're emailing IG every day to try to get back the account. So if any of my followers or subscribers if you know anything about um, how to get back an account from a hacked uh, account and this is sad because this is a Nigerian hacker that hacked the account sending out all kind of spam to our followers so if you know how to do that drop a comment uh, let me link we're, we're trying to get that back but you'll know that I'm as a Jamaica music conference um, I'm very passionate about the Jamaica music industry and a lot of artists now are coming up onto this knowledge of neighboring rights and what are what are neighboring rights when you're talking about public performance remember that when you have copyright we have the two distinct copyrights we have the composition copyright and then we have the sound recording copyright two distinct copyrights with every song that's out there the sound recording copyright is also known as the master recording the composition that's the lyrics and the underlying rhythm in this in the reggae dancehall sense so those are two separate copyrights on the composition side you have your ASCAPs your BMI your JCAP all of those that collect for your public performance royalty on the composition side on the sound recording side this is now where neighboring rights come in what are neighboring rights neighboring rights are the public performance rights that are due on the sound recording side now this is very um, important because when uh, something is publicly performed there are two copyrights that are always being implicated again there's the the composition and there is a sound recording or the master recording and public performances when we talk about public performances we're talking about radio we're talking about streaming services we're talking about new media TV we're talking about public performances when you hear a song in a club in a restaurant in an arena um, you know these uses have to be licensed they're paying blanket licenses to these establishments and so money is being collected here's a tricky thing about the neighboring rights uh, the United States does not collect neighboring rights um, for sound recordings they weren't part of that convention they didn't sign that convention it was an international treaty that was signed so artists in the US oftentimes are not familiar now sound exchange um, which deals with our sound recording copyright in the US does collect for um, uses on satellite radio and and the like but it does not collect for it only collects for digital radio royalties on broadcast and non terrestrial radio so that's your Pandora that's your Sirius XM um, very important because this is one of the baskets that's gonna allow you to collect money build your legacy remember copyright is about generational wealth it's about your your assets as a content creator and every kingdom needs assets every portfolio you need your assets and your asset base as a creative are your intellectual property assets um, so we talked about the two distinct copyrights you have your composition you have your sound recording uh, so neighboring rights are typically paid to record companies and featured performers Non-featured performers such as background vocalists are also able to reap uh, royalties from neighboring rights organizations as well. Um, the rules for governing neighboring rights uh, collection agencies different from country to country. So it's important to know 
um, what important points in each country and there are several different agencies um, you have a lot of them in the UK that are popping up I've dealt with artists that have been approached by companies that specialize in neighboring rights um, because they are aware that you know in the West a lot of uh, people are not collecting or especially in the reggae dance hall uh, most of our artists are not collecting their neighboring rights so you have a lot of British companies and again you want to have a, a UK attorney review those agreements um, but if you want to just learn generally about neighboring rights again you can always book a consultation with myself or any other entertainment attorney and again to know because if you didn't book that consultation you might not even know that neighboring rights is a thing and that's one of the benefits of uh, connecting with an entertainment attorney so you can even know what money you have on the table that you're not collecting uh, outside of the United States rights holders you have to actually actively register to collect neighboring rights so if you're not actively registered you're not gonna get it it's not just gonna come to you because you are uh, your, your your songs are being publicly performed in another jurisdiction the feature artist also has to be distinguished from the non-featured artists the session musicians and musicians are paid from a separate fund so you have to make sure that that's very clear and this brings us to one of the most critical points in the modern music industry which is your metadata um, when your engineer or whoever's doing your studio session is inputting that uh, data your ISRC your other codes that you need uh, it's so critical to make sure all of that information is right so it's better to take your time or have somebody who's knowledgeable to do that for you because a mistake in the metadata can mean you're not going to get paid or it's going to be a delay in your payment so it's so critical um, it's also critical that you have a will or a deed of, of probate with specific instructions with as it relates to passing on your neighboring rights from your sound recordings um, and that's important because if you do pass and you want these benefits to pass to your heirs um, you know having an agreement just saves your estate from having to go through headaches to try to make sure that that revenue is transferred so there's a lot um, going on again this is your public performance right for the sound recording this is the the sound recording or the master recording copyright every time it's performed on terrestrial radio or traditional media um, there is a, a public performance ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, JCAP all of the regular players in the West are not collecting that revenue so don't think because you're registered with them that you're collecting this neighboring rights so again this is the power of copyright this is neighboring rights this is one of the reasons why it's so important to um, have an awareness of the power that your digital assets can bring to you and once again it's so critical that the lion tell its own story and this is why we have the lion's voice Sila neighboring rights make sure you know about them Isis Nice.